Today we're going to talk about Japanese obi. When I have a booth at a Japanese festival or a trunk show, people see these obis and they say, are those table runners? So I enjoy explaining what a traditional Japanese obi is. It is the sash, the belt, the very elaborate, colorful, stiff belt that is worn with a kimono, wrapped around a couple times, and tied in a big bow in the back. And there are many different styles and many different levels of formality with an obi. Let me tell you about a few. This first one here is called a maru obi, and it is the most formal, the highest level of formality. It's wide, about 14 inches, and it's patterned on both sides. This will be a difference with others that you'll see in a minute. Patterned on both sides. And so you can imagine how expensive these were to make. Why would you pattern it on the back if it never gets seen? Because this is a very expensive, very formal, very elegant obi choice. These would be worn to weddings or a reception for dignitaries, something very classy, very elegant, very formal. And I've chosen these two to show you because this one is a very contemporary version. This is a very vintage version. Contemporary ones, maybe from the 60s, 70s, 80s, will have a lot of gold, very shiny, a lot of shimmer. Older, 40s and 50s or older, a small repeat, subtle pattern. So here we have two Fukuro obis. This is the next level down uh, in formality from the Maru obi I just showed you. Both contemporary, brightly colored, the difference between maru and fukuro is not the width, which is the same, but the backside, which is plain. However, in this case, there's a little bit of patterning on the tail. So when you make the bow, you'll have a little extra color. This one, also a fukuro, is blank on the back, but it also has a blank section on the front, about a yard in the very center. And this is because that's hidden where it's wrapped around the waist. So here's a way to get a very formal and elegant obi with less cost than the maru obi because the backside is not patterned and in some cases you even save a little bit on the weaving on the front side. And next we have the third level of formality, the Nagoya obi, which came about in the 1950s or so after the war when times were tough when the maru and the more formal obis were very expensive and very cumbersome. So they're looking for a kind of a modernization. So they came up with this idea, where the Nagoya obi is still wide, 14 inches wide, like the formal ones, where you need it in the back where it's going to be tied in a bow. But the rest of it has been folded over and sewed it on the side so that the belt portion is already in half where it belongs around the waist. It makes it easier to tie because there's not a lot of fussing. It's easier to wear because it's not as thick around the waist. It's a little cheaper because only one side would have been patterned, but it's folded over and you still get it on both sides. The belt section is reversible, so if you spill a little soy sauce on one side, you can always wear it on the other side. But they're a little difficult to display. There are lots of ways to display them, and we'll put a link below in the description for some ideas from YouTube. So they are displayable, a little more challenging. This was a contemporary version. This is a more vintage version, more casual. And next is the Han Obi. Han means half in Japanese. And as you can see, it's half width. It still has the full length, about 11 feet, but it's half width, easier to wear, more casual, typically worn at summer events like um, festivals uh, with your yukata, your summer Japanese kimono, or men can wear these as well. And finally, we have the quick and easy Japanese version of the clip-on tie. This is called a two-piece or quick obi. These came into vogue probably in the 70s when time was of the essence and people couldn't really afford to have a professional kimono dresser come and get them ready. So what we have are two pieces. This is the belt portion with ties that get hidden that go around the waist, and then the clip-on bow with a clip in the back to go over the belt, ties to secure it, and here you have your fairly casual but very pretty bow in the back. So that'll give you an idea of the variety of shapes and sizes of Japanese vintage obi. But keep in mind they're all about the same length, about 11 feet, even though the width might vary slightly or a lot depending on the style that you get. 
So while some of my customers actually do buy the obi to wear with a kimono, maybe they're studying tea ceremony, going out for sushi, or it's a Japanese-themed party, but many others buy them for decor items. They might be modified into a table runner. This one's been cut, so it's only six feet instead of 11 feet. Plenty of space also to make pillow centers or tote bags or many, many other things from the fabric. In our Japanese boutique of accessories, we do make tote bags from vintage obi fabric because it's very sturdy. There are a lot of YouTube videos that show you how to tie the obi if you're gonna wear it in many different ways. Check out our description for some links. There's also links on how to display an obi in your home. But whatever you decide to do with your obi, we hope you enjoy it for many years to come. Arigatou gozaimashita.